Steve Hislop did not make the most of that advantage. He's still trailing by 30 points. Chris Walker still keeping his championship alive. And Hayden, despite the injury, still there in fifth. 25 laps again, 25 points up for grabs. The lights go to green. The yellow Ducati on the right-hand side, we know it's Matt Llewellyn. He had a cracking start. Chris Walker, number two, is going well. Tucked into third place, Ian McPherson on the second of the two Kawasaki's, the two factory Kawasaki's, shall I say, because there are lots of privateers running Kawasaki's in this race. McPherson in third, Rutter in fourth, Mackenzie number one in fifth, Hislop going well in sixth place, number 11. Race leader Chris Walker, number two, making no mistake this time so far in the race. In second place, it's still Matt Llewellyn. Rutter in third, but he's got Ian McPherson, number six, desperate to make amends. The number six, Kawasaki, who's got Neil McKenzie, fellow Scotsman Neil McKenzie, going around the outside. Now McKenzie slips in front at the bus stop, turns it into the left-hander. First, second, third, fourth now McKenzie, number one. And he's hunting down the Honda of Michael Rutter. Steve Hislop has got to get past Ian McPherson and go with Mackenzie Steve if he's going to close the points gap. He really has if he wants to close that points gap down. But Chris Walker trying to make amends for that first race crash and he's gone off the line like a scalded cat. He's been consistently faster than anyone else here this weekend and I think he'll really be pushing hard to win this race. Michael Rutter, number three there in third position. He's going much better since the changes in the team. He's proved he can race that Honda in the dry as well as the wet and really got a good result in the first one. I think keen now to keep that momentum going. McPherson has a look down the inside of his lot, but his lot bike snaking all over the place. He goes for the wide line. He always takes a wide line. And can McPherson go up the inside? No, he can't. His lot now on the charge. He can see his teammate in front of him and he's his target. It's at this point in the season, and we are nearly two-thirds of the way through the 1998 Championship, that riders are beginning to think for next year. They are keen to impress. They are keen to do everything possible to come to the attention of team managers with fat checkbooks and nice pens to get their signature on the contract. There is already a rumour that Troy Bayliss may still be staying with the GSE squad for the 1999 season, but they have yet to sign him. And similarly, Hislop and McKenzie will be on somebody's shopping list for next year, I'm sure. Michael Rutter will be keen to stay with Honda. He's doing an admirable job. And Matt Llewellyn just wants a full-time job. That's all he wants. And he's going well in this one with a host of factory stars and established superbike runners breathing down his exhaust pipe. McPherson now being dropped away. The pace is getting just a little bit hot. Matt Llewellyn, though, number 43 on the Ducati. Remember, out in front. And there's a faller. Number 40, John Pugh, one of the Kawasaki privateers. Oh, the marshals put the bike down in the gravel again to add insult to injury. But fortunately, the rider fit and well. Good runoff areas here at Mallory Park. So hopefully, Steve, no injuries. And Chris Walker disappearing into the distance. The battle is the second place. It's Matt Llewellyn from Rutter in third, having another good ride in the dry. And behind him is the battling Yamahas. Now we see going into the hairpin, and it's Mackenzie on the inside line. Number 11 there, Hislop takes the wide line. It doesn't do him any favours at all. This really is a tremendous battle, and it is for the championship, because at the moment, Mackenzie has that 30-point advantage, but Hislop keen to make amends for his first race disappointment. Hislop chopped through on the inside at the devil's elbow, and that's a hairy place to do it. I've seen many a spectacular crash there in my time at Mallory Park, but he went through on the inside of Neil Mackenzie because he knows full well that is a gigantic Kawasaki crash. That's Ian, that's Ian McPherson, thankfully walking away. There'll be a big repair bill if indeed they can repair that bike. It's going end over, end over end, destroying itself. Thump on the front forks, the fuel tank lying over by the tyre wall. And oh, and a marshal pitching down as well, obviously making a bid for safety. And that came to nothing. Look at Steve Hislop, he's on the inside of the right-hander from Michael Rutter, going through past Michael Rutter. Ahead of him now, second place man Matt Llewellyn. We're looking with Steve Hislop, who's now making a bid on the Ducati, going up to the heaven on the end, rocketing past. He knows full well what he's got to do, and that's get away from Neil McKenzie, and he's doing an admirable job. McKenzie's gone past Rutter. We're riding with Rutter now. The battle is on between the two Yamaha men. Steve Hislop knows he's got to get out in front. But remember, the race leader is Chris Walker on the Kawasaki. Steve Hislop now in second. Look at the gap Walker's got. Llewellyn is coming under some pressure now from Neil McKenzie. Yeah, he really is. McKenzie will know this circuit very, very well, but 
watch there as Llewellyn split the two Yamahas back on board with Rutter. Thankfully, we've had the window cleaners in and we're getting much clearer pictures now, so they've obviously fixed that problem. And there's Rutter having a look as Mackenzie goes down the inside of Llewellyn and Rutter was also looking to do that. So, second place now, his lot. Behind him, his teammate Mackenzie as they're coming up again into this breaking area in Hairpin. We've seen so much action here. We see his lot. He'll again take that wide line. I would think Mackenzie will look to the inside. Doesn't seem to change any positions. Rutter there keeping a nice position, watching position. Hopefully we'll be back with him on board camera shots and watch what's going on in front. If Steve Hislop can maintain this advantage over Neil McKenzie, he will claw back a further four points because he is in a 20-point position. McKenzie, if he finishes third, will pick up 16. He will be doing those mathematics, of course. He knows exactly what the score is, and possibly his pit crew will be telling him the same thing, but he knows who's in front of him. Look at Hislop, look at McKenzie, right with them as well. Michael Rutter, number three, not letting the Yamaha men get away. It's Kawasaki leading, Yamaha second, Yamaha third, Honda fourth. We're on board with that Honda again as McKenzie takes a look at Steve Hislop. Michael Rutter is just getting better. Oh, Hislop, unbelievably wide, and he's missed out. He's going to sacrifice that possible advantage and he's going to lose out again, but he's fighting back. He's almost side by side with McKenzie. That's a brave attacking move again on the inside, but no, McKenzie moves across in front. It's really nip and tuck between these two. Well, it looked like Hislop just ran into the hairpin a little bit too fast. He didn't want to squeeze the front brake as we saw what happened to Troy Bayliss earlier on, and he just ran in too deep, and Hislop just went wide, and that allowed McKenzie to get through. So here we are, back at this battle we've been seeing all year. Normally it's been for first and second place, but remember, this is for second and third. Chris Walker already has a five-second advantage, which is a huge amount. Hislop has a look over his shoulder there. Does he have a problem? He was looking behind to see what was going on. Sometimes you need to know where another rider is when you're going to make a try and make a pass at the hairpin. He went wide again. That's his favourite line. Unfortunately, he's managed to cut back in at the bus stop and keep Michael Rutter behind him. But now it's McKenzie. McKenzie slides. They go through Devil's Elbow. Third gear corner. They come out at the bus stop in second. Short shift into third. That means shift up into third very quickly. Using the torque, his lock there, shadowing his teammates. Number one, Neil McKenzie, second place. Number 11, Steve Hislop in third. Number three, Michael Rutter in fourth. We are now with Michael Rutter again, looking at the rear end of Steve Hislop. Is the Honda quicker than the Yamaha? It's certainly coming out on the right-hand side, down towards the Lake S's as they flick into the Lake S's. They go right, then they go left. Now the sprint up towards the chicane. Rutter, this time moving over to the left, he possibly will dive back on the inside if his slot goes wide. He's certainly taken a look at it. Reynolds almost nudged by Terry Reimer, who's moving forward. Terry Reimer going well. Third, fourth. Llewellyn still in fifth, number 43. And you're right, Reimer is closing all the time. Behind us is Terry Reimer. We're back on board now as we're chasing Hislop here into Gerard's corner. Hislop slowing, I think. You can see now Rutter closing on him. They're in fifth gear, 130 miles an hour about at this point. Rutter can't get through. There's only one real line as he shadows Hislop out of this corner here. And this is where you power it out in fifth. Will he go up the inside as they go into the S's? It looks like Hislop's gone in there fast, really fast. He's using the front tyre. And I think he's, he has, he's run wide. His lock's gone wide, he has a rear tyre problem, I'm sure. He was trying to push it in fast, but he had no grip on the exit. So, now Rutter, we can see from these pictures, into third spot once again. You might well be asking yourself, where's the number 32 Australian Troy Bayliss? Well, the unfortunate Bayliss came out with a water leak or a retirement on the warm-up lap, didn't even make the grid. So he is watching this from the sidelines and watching valuable points go to all of his competitors. Bad news indeed, but he goes on to Cadwell. There's Michael Rutter, number three, giving a terrific ride here. Hislop, Llewellyn, and Reimer pushing hard. There's Hislop behind Michael Rutter. Rutter now stretching the advantage behind Neil McKenzie. So Rutter is on target for three on the bike, third in the race, a rostrum position, and through goes Terry Reimer on the inside of Matt Llewellyn. There's the race leader, Chris Walker, on the Kawasaki number two with a four-second lead now as he goes on to the start finish straight again it's a huge gap and i dare say had he not crashed in the first race he would have won both of them mackenzie now is thick among the tail enders threading his way through the traffic michael rutter steve hislop in fourth place coming under pressure now from suzuki's terry reimer who seems to gain pace as the race goes on 
Steve, would that be due to his endurance experience? Well, I think so, but he's also getting used to this bike. They've been changing a lot of things during uh, practice here, getting the bike working. And you, we can see now that Hislop has some serious problems. Terry Reimer just rode around the outside of him at Gerard's Corner, which is virtually impossible to do with someone that's riding a competitive motorcycle. So Hislop now going backwards, which is a real shame. And as you see, Michael Rutter has lots of back markers here. It's a real problem. The back markers don't quite know what's coming. Remember, these bikes don't have wing mirrors. Hislop has a look over. He's looking at that rear tire. You can actually see it's starting to break up on the right-hand side. The Gerrard's corner is a long, long, fast corner. They go into it at 120. They come out of it at 130, and it's torn his tire apart. Back with race leader now and on the last lap. So he is cruising to a victory. What a great ride from this very, very talented young man. 25 points will go to Chris Walker, keeping his championship very much alive. There are still 200 points potentially up for grabs in the four remaining rounds. Eight races, 25 points for each race. The checkered flag goes to Chris Walker. That's the congratulations of his team. He should have done it, dare I say, and made it a Walker double. Unfortunately, he gave us some armchair entertainment and threw it away big time. Mackenzie, Rutter, Reimer, second, third and fourth. Reynolds another brave ride to fifth and his stock struggled to seventh. Chris, that was a stunning performance. You want more races at Mallory, I bet. Absolutely, yeah. The bike's been brilliant all weekend and the tyres have been awesome. We just, you know, had no problems, just had a bit of unfortunate look in the first race, but I get plenty of that. Michael, I understand you got the fastest lap in another great race. And in the dry, you must be very happy. Yeah, I just, you know, I couldn't throw out for anything better. The bike was fantastic, you know, and, you know, it's just me getting more on the pace now. You'll be looking forward now to Cadwell Park and Silverstone, I'm sure. Yeah, all of them, you know, I just can't wait to get to any of them now. Yeah, okay. We're finally on the pace. Neil, at midpoint there, that looked like one of the toughest second place rides I've seen you have. Yeah, Steve has given me a hard time. Mallory is a tricky place. I went down in the first race for no apparent reason, so I really wanted to do a damage limitation exercise in the second race, but Steve's still giving me a hard time. And I need to try and to I need to be trying to beat Steve. Um, but we managed to get home in front of him, so that's a good day for me. No apparent reason. I think it's a very generous remark by Neil McKenzie, and he now leads by 41 points from his slot. And the battle will go on. Still a lot at stake, so anything can happen between the Yamaha men. Ray Stringer took the privateer win in round 16, and his protege Max Vincent, who won round 15 in the privateer championship, still second in the table behind Phil Giles. Ray Stringer himself is seventh. But there it is, Chris Walker, damaged kneecap and all, a fantastic win here at Mallory.